Hello, welcome to Ecoholics. In this video, we'll discuss about ISLM curve. This is one of the uh, important topic in modern macroeconomics. In this video, we will learn about how to derive IS curves and explain the details about ISLM curve. In this video, we'll also discuss how the uh, modern economists derived this concept from the Keynesian economics. So first of all, we'll discuss about the background of ISLM curve. Here we'll discuss about the Keynesian model. In the Keynesian model, we had discussed about that the determination of output on national income is based on two important things. That is consumption demand and investment demand. In particular, in the last video, we had discussed about investment demand. That also depends on two things. Number one is rate of interest and second one is marginal efficiency of capital. Rate of interest is a simple, that's the cost of borrowing. And the second one is marginal efficiency of capital means the future rate of expectation of profit. So it means these two things are important in determining the investment or the level of investment in the economy. Now the consumption depends on two things that is propensity to consume and level of income. So we'll discuss about the propensity to consume in the later or the after few minutes. We'll first discuss the ISLM curve. Here for example we'll uh, see who gave the concept. So Hicks and Hansen, that is J.R. Hicks and Elvin Hansen, gave the concept and extended the Keynesian economics to this modern ISLM model. Here for example, we'll, IS means investment and saving and LM means liquidity and money. So here we'll discuss about these two important personality that gave the integrated model based on two uh, two major important curves known as IS and LM curve. Here for example, we'll discuss about how these two uh, curves representing the goods market and the money market equilibrium. These concepts also depends on the national income rate of interest that is demand for money and supply of money and many other things that is interrelated in the economy. Because Keynes said that money market is different from the goods market. So here in this modern model, will integrate these two concepts. So in this video, the current video, we'll discuss only one IS curve, only IS curve, and in the next and the subsequent videos, we'll discuss about LM curve, and finally the equilibrium in the goods and the money market. So, for example, here goods market represents the investment of goods and services in the economy and money market uh, representing that like demand for and supply of money in the economy. But according to Keynes that, Keynes said that when, when you demand for investment goods, it means you have to borrow funds from the financial sector and it also depends on the rate of interest. So that is why the uh, integration of these two important things is very vital for the modern economics. Now we'll coming on to the simple derivation. So first of all, we'll see the negative relationships of investment and rate of interest. So here we'll draw the simple diagram. This is your investment demand curve. Here we are writing investment. This is your investment on x-axis. On y-axis we are taking rate of interest. That's a very simple thing because whenever your rate of interest suppose R0, investment will be I0 in the economy. When we put figures that will make more clarity. Suppose for example due to some reason due to the uh, easy money policy by the central bank that means reducing the interest rate to R1 your investment demand in the economy will also increase like this one. So whenever the reduction in the rate of interest, your investment demand will increase. And when your investment demand will increase, it means the aggregate output will also widen in the economy. This is a simple relationship between investment and the rate of interest. Now we'll see the different perspective from the aggregate demand side. Now we'll derive the 
highest curve from the aggregate demand of Keynesian economics. This is a 45 degree line that is known as income line y is equal to c plus s. Here on x axis we are taking y that is national income. Here we are saying that aggregate demand. So on the y axis we have aggregate demand and on the x axis we have income. Or income or national income we can write national income. So don't be confused that is on x axis that is national income. This is y plus c plus s. Is it like for example, this is your aggregate demand curve. So here we are considering c plus i. c plus i means consumption demand plus investment demand that consists and makes aggregate demand in the economy. This is equilibrium. And this is your y0. So here we can also write e0, i0. Now for example, due to easy money policy or we can say the, uh, that is uh, the easy credit available in the economy, it means the investment will go up. So on the assumption that the easy money policy or the credit availability in the economy is very easy, so the investment will go up in the economy. So we can write C plus I1. Here we have Y1 and equilibrium E1. It means whenever you reduce interest rate, we have seen in the last diagram, whenever you reduce the interest rate, your investment will go up. Like for example, we can understand with the simple daily life example, there will be two banks. Suppose one bank is giving a rate of interest for house loan is at 8%, another one is at 10%. So people will prefer the 8% interest rate that bank is giving. So that is why whenever the interest rate is reduced or uh, below, the certain level people will prefer to invest in the market so on the same lines whenever you have reduced the interest rate your investment will go up that is why from i0 to i1 and your national income will also increase like suppose further central bank adopts the easy money policy and further reduce the rate of interest So that is we have another equilibrium E2, here we have Y2. Now there is the same thing we can go uh, on and on because on the simple things whenever you reduce the interest rate your national income will increase because your investment has already increased in the economy. Now we will derive the IS curve. So here on the second panel. We are drawing this graph. On the x-axis we are taking national income and here we are taking rate of interest. On the y-axis that is rate of interest, on the x-axis this is national income. So for example at the E0 rate of interest was R0. It means when we compare this thing, the rate of interest, this point will be plotted on the graph. Now as we have seen in the, our example, rate of interest reduce in order to increase the investment. So rate of interest now reduced to R1. And by this, we can draw one other line. Meeting these two points. So this is our second point with the help of R1. We can also extend this. Now the third one, in order to increase more in investment, economy should be reduced or the low interest rate. So for the, the interest rate reduced by central bank, investment will go up from C plus I1 to C plus I2. So extending this income to the level. So now we have three points on our panel B that is a downward panel. We have three points. When we join these three points, we derive 
IS curve. Now the question arises why IS curve is downward sloping. Because obviously there is an inverse relationship between the rate of interest and the level of investment. So IS curve is downward sloping will give a reason why downward, why downward sloping and we also see the reasons behind shifting in the IS curve. So this is the simple derivation. You can take a screenshot of that diagram. This is a simple thing. When we draw or extend these line to the x-axis, we are referring to the same y0, y1 and y2, this same extended line. So the IS curve is a downward sloping. Now we'll discuss. There are two reasons why IS curve is downward sloping. So why why are not sloping IS curve? First one and the second one. There are only two reasons. So first one we'll discuss about. Elasticity of investment. And the second one is multiplier effect. So first one is elasticity of investment. It means how the investment is responsive or to the changes in the rate of interest. Like for example, we can see that we we'll draw one diagram. Here we can draw the diagram. Suppose this is your investment curve, investment demand. This is the rate of interest. Another case, this is your investment demand. This is your rate of interest. There are two different slopes of this investment demand curve. Here suppose the rate of interest is R0, the same thing here, rate of interest is R0, your investment is at I0, I0. Now if the investment demand curve is inelastic, it means the less responsive to the changes in the rate of interest, when you reduce the rate of interest, from R0 to R1, your investment will increase about a less amount. Now in the next panel, if you reduce the rate of interest, your investment will increase manifold. It means the elasticity, the responsiveness of the rate of interest to the investment demand also determine the slope of IS curve because whenever you have a steep investment demand curve it means the less responsive suppose you are reducing the interest rate and the investment is not uh, flourishing in the country on the economy that's the current situation happening in the Indian economy because when we see the Indian economic data in November uh, 2016 we, uh, we uh, we uh, imposed the demonetization or we can say that the demonetization policy reduce the interest rate of the banks from the successive months and the successive quarter. But still in the current situation, we are lacking private investment in the economy. That is the very worrisome for the government of India. That is why in order to boost the private sector investment, government is trying to reduce the interest rate. But that is inelastic of the investment demand. That is the same situation of Indian economy currently. This is another example, when you reduce the uh, small interest rate, your investment will increase manifold. That also depends on the supply and demand in the uh, economy and also the population growth and many other factors, exogenous and endogenous factor. Now we'll discuss about the second factor that is multiplier effect. So the multiplier effect means whatever the multiplier value, it means it depends on the propensity to consume. Now for example, propensity to consume means how much you consume from your increment in the income. Suppose your income increases by 100 rupees. 
simple thing 100 rupees and you are consuming 40 rupees from that it means your marginal propensity to consume is 0.4 or we can say 40 percent so whatever when your MPC is increasing it means your multiplier value has also increased you can refer to the video of multiplier for the detailed explanation about marginal propensity to consume but here we can simply say whenever the value of multiplier is more it means the effect of investment on the national income will become manifold like for example when you uh, draw the diagram of aggregate demand your little bit increase in the investment will lead to manifold increase in the level of income that's a simple two things why IS curve is downward sloping now we'll discuss about shifting of the IS curve this is your IS curve here we have national income on the x-axis on the y-axis we have a rate of interest the shifting of IS curve it means the main thing the main thing of shifting in the IS curve it depends on the autonomous expenditure so what does it mean autonomous expenditure generally autonomous expenditure refer to the government expenditure because government does not think about level of income in the economy rate of interest prevailing in the economy but government had to invest in some sectors like building up roads in the rural areas that is not profitable for the private sector but government has to build to give some incentive for the private sector to further develop the area like for example the government of India is developing the roads in the northeastern part or developing roads in the mountainous region of Himalayas that is why because the private sector do not think that is profitable for their uh, for their company or for their uh, for their growth that is why government is giving incentive by providing first class road to the mountainous region or the uh, dense forest of northeastern area that is why somewhere government has to invest now for example government invested in the rural road that is why the investment increases to IS1 so IS curve shifted outward because your government expenditure goes up so the same thing this is prevailing rate of interest this is your income Y0 you can extend this thing so this is Y1 here we can say that your investment increases this much amount that depends on delta G multiplied by 1 minus MPC that is the value of multiplier so here we can uh, write multiplication sign also so that's a government multiplier it means the change in the investment will lead to manifold change in the level of income so that causes the shift in the this um, uh, IS curve was simple enough that's it for this video we can also uh, see the uh, reduction in the IS curve with by imposing taxes or by reducing the government expenditure so it can also work in the same direction again hope you like this video if you have any doubt recommendation or any feedback you can mention in the comment box and if you have any other doubt you can also contact to our email ID I'll reply in the 24 hours the maximum time will be for 24 hours I'll reply soon as soon as I will get your email another thing you pl please uh, like this video give a thumbs up and also share with your friends finally the subscribe to the channel ecoholics stay tuned thank you so much have a nice day